1950s in the United States is the decade that many Americans today consider to be a time of prosperity and progress. The economy was booming, the civil rights movement was starting to pick up steam, and Americans knew some semblance of peace. The same cannot be said for the Soviet Union, however. For most Soviet citizens, the economy was near desolate, as corruption in an upper-class-centric economy siphoned out money from the poor and gave it to the rich. Liberal rights as we know them were essentially extinct, and no Soviet knew peace as the watchful eyes of Stalin's KGB were always gazing down on them. Why am I telling you all this? Because this is the setting that the game takes place in. This section about the plot isn't going to be too long since there really isn't a whole lot of it, but before that, let's harken back to the setting. The 1950s era USSR and 1950s Eastern Europe as a whole is one of my favorite periods of modern history to learn about. So it's a shame it's not covered as much as I'd like it to be in games. There's so much that could be done with this period. So what do the devs do? Do you play as a Forest Brother partisan fighter? Do you join up with an Eastern Bloc resistance movement? How about a regular Russian citizen that takes up arms in a fictional rebellion against Stalin? No. All of those are wrong. In fact, this game's plot is as morally bankrupt as it is basic. You play as a KGB agent that tries to prevent an assassination attempt on Stalin. Hey guys, I have a great idea for a game. How about a game where you play as an SS soldier putting down the Warsaw Uprising? That's a great idea, isn't it? No, that's a disgusting idea. Just as it is an awful idea as preventing Stalin's assassination. As a person with family members both living and deceased who lived in the USSR, this plot honestly soured my view of the game. Speaking of which... The Stalin Subway came out in 2005. You would think a game that old would have no problem whatsoever running on a modern PC like the one that I have. <laughs> you stupid! <laughs> Well, you'd be wrong. For one thing, this game refuses to work with Windows 10. The most recent Microsoft operating system that this game supports is Windows 7, and there was no way I was downgrading my PC's OS just for one game. So, I had to go online and download a fan patch and install it just to get the game to launch. And even after that, there were still so many performance issues that existed. The most egregious of these being that literally whenever you hit the escape key, the game just freezes up for an arbitrary amount of time. This includes when you hit the escape key to skip cutscenes, as well as trying to pause in-game. Sometimes, it would even hard crash my PC, so I had to turn it off just to exit the game because Task Manager just wouldn't pop up. There were also too many soft crashes and freezes to count. On top of that, whenever I would try to boot up the game with the 1280 by 960 option, I would just get a black screen that wouldn't go away, and I'd have to power off my PC just to try and boot up the game again. So good luck ever trying to play the game at a decent resolution setting. I could go on, but I think you get the idea. Well, hot dog congrats, comrade. After all that pain just to get the game working, you're finally ready to play it. Unfortunately for you, one word comes to mind when I think of this game. Generic. This game is so cookie cutter and so uninspired that I struggled to even finish it. This game only took me maybe about three hours to beat, but it felt like 13. Nothing in this game is good or stand out. At best, this game is just playable. Just. And at worst, it's a painful chore. I'll go ahead and first talk about what I think is good about the game, since there really isn't much to talk about. The soundtrack, for one thing, is better than this game deserves. Like, some of the tracks are actually super catchy and enjoyable. It's no Doom 2 or Halo, sure, but it's still good and worth pointing out. The 
weapon roster is also pretty diverse. There's a mix of pistols, rifles, automatics, and even an RPG. The voice acting and awful cutscenes also made me laugh a couple times, which I guess is good in a backhanded way. You'd better read Comrade Stalin's speeches, Dad. Well, everybody does what he has to. You know, I'm an old intellectual. I've even seen the Tsar studied at the Lyceum. Sure, and I'm a scary KGB officer. <laughs> These are all the positives I can think of, so now we have to talk about literally everything else. So you know how I said just a second ago about how the weapon selection is diverse? Well, if I'm being honest, that doesn't mean much at all, because the gunplay is awful. For one thing, the recoil for a lot of the weapons in this game is insanely high. Now. I have no clue if the recoil is this bad in real life, but what I do know is that it's not fun at all. On top of that, the enemies in this game are all total bullet sponges. Yes, these KGB agents wearing nothing but thin cloth clothing take an entire pistol magazine to put down and multiple rounds from an automatic rifle. Compare that to an actually good game, like World at War, and the difference is night and day. The enemies in that game have as much in the way of body armor, and they go down like nothing. The people you're fighting have no reason at all to be as bullet spongy as they are. The awful gameplay and bullet spongy enemies are both pretty much the main reason this game was a chore to get through, as each combat encounter takes longer to get through than it really should. It also doesn't help that you cannot sprint. That all being said, the map design doesn't help much either. This game, I think, has 29 levels in it. I might have counted wrong, who knows, I don't care. And none of them are good. I wouldn't say that any of them are necessarily bad, just not good. I think the designers tried to emulate Half-Life. The maps in Half-Life serve as a linear style of gameplay, while also having branching paths and open spaces that make it seem more open than enclosed, even if you are on a linear pathway. But Stalin's subway emulates that very poorly. For one thing, I never wanted to explore these branching paths, because the game is just not fun at all, so I never thought there was any real incentive to do so. But also, aside from occasionally finding some ammo or maybe a gun, there's nothing special about these paths. Nothing challenging, nothing memorable, nothing fun. I think my least favorite map out of all of them is actually level 2 of all levels. In level 2, you're in a logging camp and you have to escape said logging camp. And because of how dull and brown the color scheme is, generally speaking, the enemies all blend into the surroundings. So you're getting shot from all different directions, including from watchtowers overhead, and you can't do anything about it because you can't see sh this problem arises a few times throughout the game, but it's at its worst here. So this game is about stopping an assassination on Stalin. What exactly do you do throughout the game to stop this? Not a whole lot, if I'm being honest. Throughout the whole game, you're just going around shooting your fellow Russians without much context at all. I had no clue for like the first half of the game if I was killing loyal Russians or traitorous ones. Between a few of the levels towards the middle of the game, you're shown a few cutscenes of Stalin and some other Soviet figure who's obviously the traitor behind the plot. But again, I had no clue for most of the game if I was fighting for him or for Stalin. It isn't towards the end of the game when you rescue your father, who at the beginning of the game was apparently captured for whatever reason, that you decisively learned that you were fighting to save Stalin the whole time. Somehow, the traitors have planted a f***ing nuclear bomb on a metro in underground Moscow, and that's how they planned on killing Stalin along with, like, every other Russian in the city, apparently. It's so absurd that it comes off as almost comedic. But honestly, until towards this end point of the game, you're in the dark of what exactly your goals are. As far as the player is concerned, all you're doing is just gunning down Russian soldiers for no reason. But don't worry, comrade, because in the end, you save your glorious leader, comrade Stalin, and also Moscow, I guess, by sending the metro out of the city where presumably still blows up in the countryside. Yay? Honestly, there isn't too much else to say, really. This script is nowhere near as long as One Day for Ched's script, and yet I have already run out of things to say, which really goes to show how accurate my original point was. This game isn't horrendously awful or anything, it's just generic as all hell, 
and completely seen it a million times. It's a run-of-the-mill first-person shooter with jank gunplay and mediocre level design, which, depending on your own personal taste, that might even make it worse than Shed. I guess to sum it all up, yeah, don't buy this game. Don't buy it as an April Fool's gift for a friend. Don't even go searching this game up on Steam. Just forget about it. Never give it any more attention outside of internet videos that tear it apart, and go play Call of Duty instead. And yes, I am aware this game has a sequel, or like, an expansion pack, or whatever it is, but that's gonna have to wait until a later date. A much, much later date. Das vidanya tavarish. Mirzo Shad, Pianzao, Sao, Sao,